So a few things. Um, first, let's talk about the learning target. And we did lesson four, which is a super important lesson. And it's about equations and their solutions. So these learning targets are always like your checklist to see if you met the goal or if you understood it. And if you can explain what it means for a value or pair of values to be a solution to an equation, then you met the goal. So like table one, what does it mean for something to be a solution to an equation? They had algebra earlier in the day, so we'll see. We'll see if it's done. If I ask, maybe if I draw an equation, maybe that will help. So say it's 2x plus 7 equals 10, and I asked you to find the solution. What am I asking you to find, center? Value of the variable. The value of the variable that makes it true. Good. Perfect. Um, and then it says value or pair of values. So that would be like if I had two variables in one equation. Now I have a pair of values that can be true. For some reason, this one was throwing people off. That was like that last example we did. Um, X is usually your input, your independent variable. Usually you get to pick what X can be. So say that. I want to give a pair of values for that equation in red. Pick a random number for x. Two. And now work out the math to figure out what y should be. What's two times two? Four. What's four plus one? Five. So a pair of values that are solutions for this one are two for the x and five for the y. So that's what we mean by like value or pair values. They need to make the equation true if they're considered solutions. So previous to this lesson, someone might say, oh, the solution is 10. No, it's not. This is like a total of the square. Okay, so solutions or values for the variables that make it true. And then being able to find those solutions, we kind of already did that in the first lesson, one and two set equations. So I did have a request from someone to talk about that a bit more. So actually solving for a variable. I plan, plan to have it today. Hopefully I can still get it today. Maybe I just might have to run to the printer. But I do have this activity for you. It's a coloring activity and it will be worth assessment points. Um, it will be based on work shown, accuracy, and sure. completion. But it's a two-step equation worksheet. So it should give you a lot of practice in solving equations. Um, so here's just a few right now. Let's pick one that looks a little more challenging, I guess. Like, let's look at number three. Again, when I'm trying to find a solution, I'm trying to find like what X has to be. Make it true. We talked about guess and check. That's what we mean by like reasoning. Not always an effective strategy. Like I can't think of something that when I divide negative two and add seven, I get negative one. So instead we teach you algebra so that you can work backwards. Undo what's being done to it. And you always start with what is farther from the variable. So in this one, number three, what's farther from the X? The seven and the negative two. Because it's not in the same fraction as it, right? It's in, separated by the plus sign. What's opposite of adding seven? <laughs> So that's what I'm going to try. And I can't see my pen, so sorry for my thoughts. But it's a rule that whatever you do on one side of the equal sign, you do to the other side. You do it on one side to make something cancel. You do it on the other side to keep it equal. So then I get just the x over negative 2 on the left, because this canceled, 7 minus 7 is 0. On the right, we need to simplify. 
What's negative one minus seven? Jenner? Negative eight. You can use the calculator for that part. Now we're not done. Look at what's being done to the X, what's currently being done to it. It's being divided by negative two. What's opposite of doing that? And whatever you do on one side. And this is me times the negative two on both sides. X is now alone. And what's negative eight times negative two? So that's how we isolate. You could plug it back in and see if it's true. See, that is actually your solution. So like 16 divided by negative two is negative eight. Negative eight plus seven is negative one. So that is a solution. Um, and for isolating, you're just undoing what's being done. So hopefully I'll have this printed for you. We'll see if I have an opportunity to just run and grab it real quick. But we'll see that we can get started on it today. Um, otherwise, we'll for sure have it tomorrow. Tomorrow, you'll also have a lesson and a homework, but you'll notice like the practices are pretty short. So I imagine you'll still have time to work on this. Um, and it's a coloring activity. So it says partner A, partner B, like you're actually being made to color. But um, you are doing one column, finding the answer. You're doing the second column, the ones that have the same answer, you're going to color like say, this one have the same answer, you would color all the threes light green in that case. And then that's how you color. So if you wanna bring some coloring utensils tomorrow, the coloring part is actually optional, but I'll give you some extra credit if you decide to color it. However, it is like a Christmas tree. I'm not trying to indoctrinate you at all. The coloring is optional. You do not have to color it. You don't. But this is pre-made. I didn't make it with Christmas tree. Right now it's currently December, so a little early. Um, and probably not everyone celebrates Christmas, but that's why that's optional. Okay. The math part of it, the completion, accuracy, and work shown, you need to put work is required. Questions on that? Okay, when I have it, I'll give it to you. So you just wait, hopefully I can get it this hour. Um, you have this practice to do, and some of you might even already be done, great, it's time to be productive to you until I get that coloring activity. Um, the unit two, lesson four, I need to put a picture of it, but it's in the school that you have comments. Unit two, lesson four, 80% or higher is your challenge today. So this is unit two, lesson four, number three. We have volunteer drivers are needed to bring 80 students to the championship baseball game. Drivers either have cars, which can seat four students, or vans, which can seat six. The equation 4C plus 6V equals 80 describes the relationship between the number of cars, number of vans that can transport exactly 80 students. Select all that are true about the situation. Okay, so long problem, let's take it one by one. So first I have, if 20 cars go, no vans are needed. So in this given equation, what variable is for cars? So that's where I'm gonna plug in the 20. And it says if 20 cars go, no vans are needed. So that would be how many vans? What number is equivalent to no vans? Zero. So we're seeing if this is a solution, um, it would make this true. So let's try it. What's four times 20? What six times zero? Is 80 plus zero 80? So we can pick that one. I feel like some people get hung up on like the technicality of things. 
Um, like if it said that people are taking cars and vans, like they would say like that can't be a possibility van. I don't think it, I don't think that matters. It's just if you plug it in and it's a solution and it's a true, then New York County. So next we have 10 cars and eight vans isn't enough to transport the students. So let's see, what am I plugging in for the C? What am I plugging in for the V? And what this is saying is that it isn't enough. So we want it to not equal 80 then in this one. So four times 10 is six times eight is, would you say that 40 plus 48, well, it's not equal to 80, but would you say that it's because there's not enough? It's because that's too much, right? So don't pick this one, even though it's not equal to 80, like it says isn't enough. It's actually way more than enough. Like we are not gonna pick that one. So now we have C equals 14 and V equals four are a pair of solutions. So if that's true, I should be able to plug it in four times 14 plus six times four. I would recommend use a calculator, like have it do the order of operations for you. Otherwise, like you need to remember that you multiply before you add. So what's four, four, what's four times 14? Okay, I'll take your word for it. I don't know that one off the top of my head. Um, what's six times four? And what is 56 plus 24? So that one makes it true. So these are solutions. I would pick that. Um, eight vans and eight cars are numbers that meet the constraints. So like constraints are like limiting factors. So again, we're basically asking if these are solutions. So four times eight plus six times eight. I think we might've done that one. I don't know if we did that one yet, but four times eight is 32. Six times eight is... 48, when I add those, do I get 80? Yeah. So then let's pick that one. If six cars go and 11 vans go, there will be extra space. So let's see, four times what? Plus six times what? So we're seeing if we have an excess of seats, that would be extra space. Six times four is what? Six times 11. When I add those together, what do I get? And that would be extra seats. So I will pick that one. I mean, it's not a solution to the equation, but it does give me more than enough seats. So that is true for this situation. And lastly, if 12 cars go, two vans are needed. So four times 12, plus six times two, four times 12 is, six times two is, does that equal 80 when I add them? It equals 60. So I would need more vans than just two. So I would just pick these four. It could be shuffled on your screen. So don't just like blindly pick, hopefully you're paying attention. Um, and yeah, you would have to pick all four of these, no others in order for it to mark it completely right. Whenever you pick a wrong answer, it deducts from your right answers. So good on that one. All right, others. Amy, number five on this practice. Okay, number four, the drama club. So the drama club is printing t-shirts for its members. The printing company charges a certain amount for each shirt plus a setup fee of $40. There are 21 students in the club. So da -da 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 -da. it doesn't give you the equation, but I do think this one is easy to make. Um, we don't know the total cost, right? That's something that can vary. Would you agree with me? 
So I'm going to give that like a T for total cost. What contributes to that total cost? The number of students in the club. Do we know how much they charge per shirt? Like, does it say anywhere in here? So that's a setup fee. So that's like not 40 per shirt. It's like a one-time fee that gets added on to the total. So do they say that each shirt is this amount? So then that's something that varies. I'm going to use a variable for that. So we could use this expression to represent my cost for the shirts. I have 21 people to account for plus that $40 fee. They didn't specify how much each shirt costs, but that would give me the total. And the reason I did that was because this next question says, if there are 21 students in the club and the t-shirt order costs a total of 187, where would I need to put that 187? for the X or for the T, because that was my total cost. So when I plug it in the right spot, I can actually start solving it. What do I get rid of first? Good. And I cancel it out by subtracting. I get 21 X equals 187 minus 40 is 147, what's opposite of multiplying 21? Dividing 40. And whatever, do I have one side? You do to the other side. So now 147 divided by 21, I get seven. Hopefully that's a drop down option, and it is. I guess the other way you could have done this is like look at your answers and try like figuring out the situation, like try plugging in six, try plugging in seven, see if it gives you 187. But yeah, I think the equation helps you figure out a little bit better. Then it gives you this new equation. So it looks like we have a new total for first statement. And it says, what is the solution to the equation? So now, slightly different, we still want to isolate the variable. So I am going to multiply the $6.50 times 21. And it becomes 201.50 equals F plus 136.50. Like, I just multiplied this out. Now get the F alone. What's the opposite of adding 136.50? And whatever I do on one side of the equal sign. And that will cancel. That will help me get the F alone. And that will give me the solution. Because that's what solution means. It's values that make it true. And when I subtract it, I get 65. And that is an answer drop down option. Now, for what does it represent? If this is my equation and we're talking about like buying t shirts and stuff, what does it represent? So my total cost is actually like this 2150. So mm, that must be my setup fee then because compare it to the one we already made where the setup fee was 40. That was just like a one-time thing you add on. It's not multiplied by anything. It's just there. And yeah. The other number was multiplied by the 21, so the 650 must be the cost per shirt. That must be the set. Does that make sense? Really great test question. Um, so that's that one. Um, other questions, Cameron? Number five, you said? Okay. Okay, so Kieran's family is having people over to watch a football game. 
They plan to serve soda and pretzels. They're preparing 12 ounces of soda. This is like that one from our last two homers. But they're preparing 12 ounces of soda and three ounces of pretzels per person. Including Kieran's family, there will be 10 people at the gathering. So a bunch of miscellaneous information. I'm going to skip ahead to see what they want. They want to know which equation best represents his budget. So they didn't say like that he has this much to spend, but his budget, think of what is contributing to it. Like what is taking away from it? This first one, they're pointing out like 12 times 10, three times 10. So let's see. That must be the 12 ounces of soda for every 10 people and the three ounces of pretzels for every 10 people. Does that have anything to do with the budget? All right, no, that's just giving me the amount of what I need total, not like anything money-wise. So if it's my budget, something like money-related, on the other side is probably gonna be something money-related, but I'll just go in order. So then I have 12S plus 3P, S being ounces of soda, P being ounces of pretzels, again, does nothing for my budget. It doesn't say that that's like how much each thing costs. So that's not contributing to my budget. All right, now this looks like we're contributing to our budget. We have one that is times six and times two. So let's see what that means. We have a bottle of soda has 22 ounces. So if I want 12 ounces per 10 people, how many ounces do I need total? If I have 10 people and I want them each to have 12 ounces of soda, how many ounces do I need? Okay, good, you're multiplying them. So I need 120 ounces of soda. It says that a bottle of soda has 22 ounces. So let's figure out how many bottles of soda we need. I'm gonna divide 120 by 22 because that'll tell me how many I need. I need 5.45 things of soda, but can I buy 0.45 of a bottle of soda? So I'm gonna round up to six. I need at least six bottles of soda and they cost $1.50 a piece. So, so far the, to me, this is looking good. If I compare it to the other that has it as um, $1.50 times S, which was ounces of soda, I'm not gonna do $1.50 times 120 ounces. Like that wouldn't contribute to the budget. That's, it's how many containers of soda I need. So just from that part alone, I'm gonna go with that it's this one that contributes to the budget. So if you have like dollar amounts and dollar amounts, they usually go together and then figure out which one makes more sense. All right, we might have time for one more depending on what it is. Any last minute question, Massimo? Okay, so number nine on the puzzle paper. So make sure like tomorrow the sub, you will have a sub by the way. Um, tomorrow the sub probably will not pass it out unless you ask for it. So only like absent people should really need it. Make sure you don't lose it. Tomorrow you will turn it in whether you're done or not. Um, but number nine was the request. So if you want to see that worked out, I'll just briefly throw it up. In number nine, what's farther from the X, the 10 or the seven? And look at what it's doing. It's being divided by seven. What's opposite of doing that? And whatever you do on one side. So then it becomes X minus 10 equals negative seven. What's opposite of subtracting 10? Whatever you do on one side. I get X equals three. Okay. 
So yeah, tomorrow you'll have a practice.